Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Malik Willis, Part 2B, the second half versus Syracuse. Uh, some really great throws in this one, and then some really some struggles at the end. I think you're really going to dig it. Let's get into it. Welcome to the QB School. All right, Malik Willis, Part 2B. Let's get it going with some horizontal stretch on steroids here. We've got the gift access route, then we've got triple option. Nice block on the perimeter. I think I've mentioned it before. Hugh Freeze, not my favorite dude, but man, can call and design some plays. This is just triple option, fancy decoration. Great job getting it to the pitch really quickly. So what am I talking about here? First thing, we've got this for show jet fly sweep motion. So we're coming across, that's horizontal stretch. The first part of this thing is we've got a gift hitch out here, a little free access hitch. If you like it, take it. Otherwise, we've got triple option. We've got same side, inside zone. There's the dive, so that's one. And then we've got the quarterback run part of it here as two. And then we've got the pitch element of it coming across with the split flow action into the flat. That's three. So again, look at the horizontal stretch. Four different options and a for show, show motion horizontally. Yes, please. Love this design. Great execution. We've got a no down here to the hitch. So no. No to the dive. No to the quarterback. There it is. Out to the pitch. So we're reading the C-gap defender here. So whoever shows up off the left tackle on our left side. There it is. No. No. Yes. Outstanding job by Willis facilitating it. Playing point guard. Outstanding. Next one here, a bit of a funky RPO. This kind of a RPO gone wrong. So to me, you know, a few different things here. First of all, the design of this thing, tough. But if you're going to come out and throw it and pull it, you really need to have a plan and taking a sack is the absolute worst case scenario, really, besides throwing a pick. So what's going on here design-wise? Because RPOs, you know, unless you're in the room, it's hard to designate exactly what it is. So let's just say this is a glance up top. We've got, we'll call this a hitch or a stick. We've got an inside fade. That really, I think he kind of screws the quarterback here coming across his face. I think we've got a locked hitch outside. It looks like they are reading this inside linebacker, the middle of the three, right? One, two, three. There's the middle of the three. That looks like who they're reading because they don't block him. So we've got five offensive linemen. We'll call this 10 personnel. I don't know what the personnel is, but three by one open. So they're going to these four and then right here. So they're reading this backside inside linebacker. Well, if you're going to play, you know, I think most people like inside fade here, this concept versus man. And you just got to come out here and hope your dude can win and get to this space and use that thing. But it's hard to read this guy and make that read in my opinion. Normally, to work this kind of in-glance thing up top, you're going to read the safety to that side, the near DB to the boundary. So again, I can't tell you what's going on for as much as I love the previous design, this one is confusing. Yes, it's bad to take a sack, but I can't tell you who's at fault here. You know, I, I will say that I'm going to guess the number two receiver down here needs to run an inside fade. I don't know what that is. Throwing up the mailbox. But... You know, the other thing here is, worst case scenario, you just hand it off. But there are a few snaps in this game, in the second half, where he's doing too much. So again, you know, the right guard is definitely blocking, run blocking. He's going downfield. We're leaving seven, it looks like, intentionally. So going to the play side inside linebacker to the left with all the bands. You know, his it looks like he's trying to, like, his eyes are to the right, reading seven, but then he's going to come back and throw that in. No. So... Poor design. Hard to put that just on Willis. You'd love to be able to at least escape enough to get a throw away. But, my goodness, and the helmet comes off, so you got to come out of play. Next one. Again, one of those plays where I'm not going to pretend to tell you what the read is, but I can tell you that whatever it is, he needs to go from high to low down to the shallow, coming across faster. So watch it come right in front of our face from left to right. So up, shallow. There it is. So he's up, escape. Right there, shallow. So he, he's got multiple opportunities to do it. Up, up, shallow. You know, now we're spinning on air. We're trying to make circus plays. We're making guys miss. Absolutely. Dude's dynamic. Most athletic guy in the field. Trying to do too much. So I'm not going to pretend to tell you 
you know what the hell the read is here as far as what's going on we've got like a, an out we've got like an over we've got a shallow coming from way out here something happening up here i can tell you that whatever it is where we're going to look downfield this needs to be number two or number three and he needs to get the ball i can almost guarantee it so when he hits that back foot he steps up and gets to the check down or gets to the shallow gets from the high to the low and i know he can do it because he does it in one of the next clips but the consistency of it you can see again you know they're deep downfield crossers down here it's not there get it to the shallow up up shallow instead we're spinning on air we're making guys miss we're certainly powerful electric dynamic runner but sometimes just get the ball out of your hands make the easy play one two three up shallow but again all that being said still making two guys miss takes three guys to bring them down impressive all at the same time next one here this is kind of what i'm talking about as far as being able to play this thing quickly so up there it is to the shallow so from the slot down here at the bottom of the field this timing of it one two three up shallow boom and it it shows like these are near back-to-back -back plays if not back-to-back -back plays the idea to be able to read this thing whatever the read is on the left everybody's out up shallow i mean it's <laughs> this is exactly what we were looking at at the previous one so he can certainly do it he's got it on film you're just looking for the consistency part of it as opposed to trying to do too much play a little bit too much hero ball like who knows what the read is up top we've got a basic we've got a post we've got a rail you know make the argument maybe you could throw that post for that half field safety but up i love it just get the ball out of your hands right tackle takes an l this is the timing of it this looks like a sunday quarterback just as far as the pocket awareness timing accuracy processing whatever fancy qb term you want to throw in there this is it from the pocket and yeah it's just a simple shallow but he's showing he could do it after the previous clip saying he couldn't so it's the consistency element of it next one here big first and ten Love this one. Come out here and rip this down at the bottom of the screen. This is absolutely beautiful timing. This is a really important rep because it comes back as kind of the critical error rep late in the game with a similar concept. But let's essentially trying to decipher what the hell this coverage is all day. My man T. White trying to disguise everything. But we're going to come down here and rip this one. I'm going to call like pivot or hinge. So come up make it look like a go route and then stop turn back out and kind of fall out so you open inside and you fall out so the drawings usually in playbooks have something like this where you come out and turn out and down or out and even better is back down the stem things to pay attention to specifically on this rep are anticipation capital a got it the other thing to pay attention to is you know birds on a fence here who knows what the hell shell they're going to show up in when they go to zero and no one kind of ends up creeping back to the middle of the field or plays the half field this is there all day every day when they do this type of coverage and if you can catch them in it you got an opportunity for a big play and there are opportunities for a big play now half of that's on the sidelines on the coaches the other half is on the quarterback you know it's not there here this is perfect anticipation outside once he let this thing go look at his base perfect no heel click Arms are separated, receiver coming, not coming out of the route yet, and a full field wide side rip. Just perfect. Sunday throw, Sunday timing. Look at the base. I love it. It's just outstanding as far as all his cleats in the ground, no heel click, feet apart, powerful base. Rip. Beautiful. Take the one-on-one -on -one outside the numbers, make him pay. Third and three. Guess what's coming? He's running it. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with the gapped out defense element of the run fit from Syracuse. But this play has actually got a better opportunity if he stays outside. But he kind of sees that wide open gap. He knows it's third and three. Just fall forward, go get a first. But if he stays outside, you got a chance to turn into punt return left. So again, just look at them. I mean, you don't have to be a math genius to realize they got too many people to the field. Not enough people to the boundary. To the short side of the field. Great call. Again, I love this quarterback run game. From what Liberty is doing, just intentional called runs. So again, you know, 
Let, let's go through the run here. We got someone in the B gap. We've got someone we'll say in the C gap. We'll say this safety is in the D here. We've got a sniffer here. We've got a lead blocker here, and we've got a wide receiver. The wide receiver is coming down to block the safety, so that leaves the corner. Yes, that's how I draw corners. So really, we've got a two-on-one here. You know, we've technically got this one-on-one -on -one here. There's no one in the A-gap, and that's why he sees this big hole and just kind of takes it and falls forward because I think if he continues to stay wide with this outside zone or stretch, it's an even better play. But again, I love the awareness to just get a first. I love the design. I love the intentional quarterback run. I mean, look at that. <laughs> look at the play side. I mean, the the three technique crosses all the way over to the negative A to the field. So we get a little nut lucky with that three technique, jumping across, stunting across. But again, nice job being able to put your shoulder pads down, get a first. Lots to like. Next one here, catch him a free play, get him to jump off sides, throw it down the field, outstanding awareness, football IQ, give your guy a shot, good things happen, love it. So get him to jump, see the free play, know to take a shot immediately, nice touch, good enough touch. Touchdown. Love it. little Aaron Rodgers special there with the free play. Again, I mean, take a look at that shell. That could be anything. End up playing essentially some iteration of almost quarters down here to the bottom. One-on-one -on -one up top to the boundary. Love it. It's just a great job quarterbacking to be able to process. I got a free play. Know exactly where my vertical thread is. Get it up and down. I mean, look at the window he's got to throw in there. I mean, again, you know, this guy's getting pushed out of bounds. Running down the track. Give your guy a shot. Good things happen. Big play. Big play. Next one. A little, again, two by two. Sniff to the boundary. Again, look at that shell. So now they invert it to like split field coverage. Run counter. Hit a big play. So why is this on here? This is on here again to show, yeah. Obviously, I love counter, but this is not why it's going to be on the quarterback eval. It's going to be on the RPO structure of this thing. So I'm going to show back-to-back -back plays here. One is a big hit counter. So on this clip, we get a chance to, we're running counter here to the field. So what does that look like read-wise, just RPO? We've got six people in the run. So we'll talk about how we're blocking it from the backside, but that basically means we can take care of six in the box. So right there, that means the quarterback usually has the near seventh defender. So whoever it is, wherever you decide, that usually then interprets where the RPO is. So if you think that the seventh defender is down here to the boundary, you usually have some sort of glance, slant, hitch option down here. If you think he's to the field, you usually have the same thing built in. So hitch, slant, post, glance, something. So to me, when the near seventh defender is to the field and he comes down and we've got an opportunity for a big post versus middle field open, this is a monster hit, monster miss. Yes, the counter hits, but you don't know that the counter is going to hit. And really, it's a poor job from that safety fitting it, to be honest, more than anything else. So watch that thing hit from the slot. Woo! Yes, please. You got you to let it rip. And it's a great job blocking it, and it's not great safety play. So from the back here, just because I love a little run school every once in a while, play side counter, we're going gap down, backer. So gap down, there's someone there. Gap down, there's no one there. Get an opportunity for a post double team to the backside inside linebacker. We are kicking the defensive end. We are wrapping to the play side inside linebacker, and we're gap hinging here from the right tackle. We are reading the near seventh defender, either here, or to the field, whoever that fit is, when the backers are bossed over like this, or bowed over really to the weak side, I guess depending on what you signify, signify the strength, whether the passing strength, the run strength, moved over here, you know this guy's not coming down, right? This is the outside linebacker. Look at all this space over here. It's an indicator that's where the safety, next safety is coming down for the run fit. So you're reading over here, you want to hit that glance post right behind it in the RPO world, big hit, big miss. And it's a great run. It can be all of the both. Catch that? It can be all of the both. <laughs> it can be and both, all of the above. Again, look at 23. Yikes. 
Uh, three is also hitting that like he's trying to run fit in a flag football match. My goodness. So let's come back to the very next play. I love this from a play caller and run the same play. It's not the exact same play because now they're running it to that boundary. But now he sees it. And he at least, well, I guess sees it, meaning the seventh defender is to the field, but he throws a free access hitch to the slot. It's the same play. Back-to-back -back plays. See the same blocking. Gap down backer front side, counter. This time he just raises up. It's like turning two, but that hitch is not that big play post. So again, it's the bones of the same play. And again, if it's working, keep dialing it up. Love that as a play caller. But again, you know, throwing a hitch that gets tackled, falling forward for six yards is not the same as a post that should score. Now we're into the fourth quarter. Love this design. Watch the double move up top. This is just dirty. Just my goodness. Dirty. Nice pass. Touchdown right on him. Beautiful. One man. Double move. A little out and up. Play action shot. Get a nice touch right on him. Can't miss outside at all. He's running down the track. But this is all route. This is play design. So first thing about this play design is how they hide the split of the double move. So see how there's a guy outside? They bring him in short motion. He touches the tight end or tackle, lets him know, hey, I'm in. And now you've got that extra space for that out and up, up top. Out, up, got him. You know, if anything to be super critical, you could talk about his eyes, maybe holding 23 in the middle of the field a little bit more. But there's only one guy. There's only one guy out on the route. If it's not there, you got to run. There's there's nothing else. Big touchdown, great play call. Next one here, not so much. So this is a Americans America's RPO here with faking whatever to run a glance to the boundary and just miss the throw. And the timing of it is kind of jacked. You can see him kind of like hesitate here, whether he doesn't quite get, and it doesn't help that the film is jumpy. But this idea being, again, we're going to go through the math here. We've got this glance up top. We have seven people in the run blocking unit. So we've got a sniffer down here, and we've got an inline tight end up top. So that means we can block seven. They've got four down and one, two, and then where are you going to determine the number three is? So if the number three is here, then this guy is on the quarterback. If the number three in the blocking structure is here, then technically this guy is on the quarterback. But if we're going to leave this guy unblocked and he hits the run fit and we've got a glance behind him, that's where the ball needs to go. you got to trust it. you got to let it rip. you got to show some anticipation, some accuracy, and put it right on him to the boundary. Run an iteration of split flow inside zone, and it's just not there. It's more the throw than anything else. Just looking for the consistency of the accuracy. You know, just out in front of them, low, and again, being picky, that's good tight coverage, but that's an opportunity for a big play. And if it's blurry, you don't like it, just hand it off. Still fall forward, get a three-yard gain on most of those runs. Next one, great throw down here to the field. But, and... It's a great job here with some yak afterwards. But again, to me, this is a few different things. One, it's not great pass protection, scheme-wise, player adjustment-wise. The other thing is, is there's a massive shot to the post again. So again, we're going to catch him in zero. You know, whatever this is, first let's watch the post from the slot. So we've already talked about some variation of this concept, right? He's already ripped it with anticipation out here. I love it. And look at the post. The post scores. Okay, JT, you're being really critical when there's a guy running right in his face, 23 coming off the slot. Okay, maybe. But if he throws that post with anticipation, yes, he's going to get hit. But it's a touchdown. Now, we get the ball out of our hands. All right, six, one, half dozen to the other. Okay, I, I don't disagree with you. It's still a great throw. It really is a great throw. I don't want to take that away. Okay, this is a big-time throw. Anticipation. Free runner in his face. Great. And maybe that's exactly what they're asking him to do. And then that's perfect. But if it's not, 
I would love to see the vision of catching zero here. So nobody back here deep in the middle part of the field. No safety deep anywhere across the field. We've got an opportunity to run a post to this area of the field. I would love to take that shot. Now it would be even better. I'd feel a hell of a lot better if we block this thing the way that I think is correct. And what I mean by that is the split flow action here of the sniffer coming across. He's got the first thing outside the left tackle. So he should be right here. Boom. But if this guy goes down into the B gap, why would he do that? Because we're having off the edge pressure. He's got the first thing off the edge. So whoever shows up outside the, outside the left tackle, the sniffer blocks. The back has the next thing. Now I prefer this with the back on this side. So it gives him a little bit more time. The only reason you'd have the back go first here is because he is there first, right? He's on this play side with this kind of same action. But again, I think if they block this correctly so that he's here and instead of the back coming down here, diving at someone's legs, cutting people, not doing anything, not having the sniffer block anyone, and we have a free runner from the slot, from the nickel. The other thing about it, quarterback-wise, I've talked about it a number of times on this channel, if someone's coming from depth, that gives you an extra hitch. So if this is a three-step drop, if he's at the line of scrimmage, you can say normally that you can get your drop and you got to throw it. So you get no hitch, like three no hitch. If he's coming from depth, five plus yards, you can go three and a hitch. So three and a hitch to throw a post with no player in the middle field where you can lay it out there, I think you got to take it. So yeah, it's being nitpicky. It's still a great play. It still is. And it would be a better play if we blocked it correctly and took a shot to the post. So one more time. Could he throw the post with the same anticipation he throws the stop down here with? I think so. For a massive play. It's a good play, but there's a great play out there too. Now, pass pro wise, watch what I'm talking about. Watch the back. So to me, the sniffer blocks 31 and the back comes off the nickel. If the way if you're going to do it this way because the back is closer to the C gap to our right. The back cannot dive at ankles, and the sniffer then needs to come across and be outside the back. So if you're going to do it this way, which I don't prefer, but let's say he's here first, then the sniffer has to be off him outside so that he gets the first one that shows, and then the sniffer blocks the nickel. So then it's blocked up, and then you can really take a shot. Then this is a touchdown. And, you know, half of this is, is more just offensive philosophy versus quarterback eval. But it's still a great throw with a free runner right in your face. It's on time. It's accurate. And it allows the yak afterwards. So don't get it twisted. It's still a great play. Unlike this. This is a chance for the game winner. We run a little fade out. I love it. And he just misses it. This is a chance to win the game. Nice job using his accuracy. Nice design. Outstanding route. And we just can't make it happen. And they call it a touchdown. It gets reversed. So what am I talking about here? He's going to come up here. Pretend like he's running a fade to the back pylon. I think he actually throws up the mailbox with his right hand. And then he's going to spin out of this thing to the front pylon. And this thing is a massive win. It's a great separation at the top of this thing. He just does him dirty. And we come out here and we throw a grounder. So you got to get out here. you got to separate. you got to be under control enough and make this throw. This throw has to be made. This throw, you have to make this throw at the high school level. That's not taking a shot. That's just the truth. Watch the route up top. Ooh, the head and the the mailbox. Look at that. I mean, look at the separation there. That's a massive win. That's a great route. And that's just, you know, that's a miss. And I, I wish he would take that thing to the front pylon as opposed to kind of the bottom of the E. But that's just a miss. You have to make that play. And you have to catch the ball too if you got a chance to. But I love the design here. Certainly athletic enough to get outside and make these types of throws. Miss. Bummer. So it's 21-21 still. Now it's fourth and four. We're going to run speed option to the boundary. Out of essentially a bizarre nub look. He decides to play what I would consider hero ball here. This is probably a pitch read. And it's a pitch read that's probably not going to score. So half on the design, half on the hero ball. So we're reading seven here. 
first of all, it's just a we. This is almost like an overthinking formation, in my opinion. So we've got tight end sniffer. So technically, he's ineligible because he's covered up outside with someone. We're running speed option this way. So the quarterback taking it, and he's kind of come downhill, and he is reading seven right here. So we're arc blocking this thing. Coming out, he can take one. But they've got us just pure numbers-wise here to me. I mean, you know, we'll just count it out here. We've got someone in the B gap. We've got someone in the C. We've got someone in the D. And we've got that extra overhang. So the, the idea here is that you come up here, you block, you read seven, you block eight. Well, there, if there's another guy out there, we're in deep trouble. Three can get out there. We don't have anybody who can block him. So he decides he's going to come up, read seven. You know, seven's tackling him right there. Pitch it. He's looking inside like he's going to take it the whole way. He sees that A gap open up to the play side, and he's going to take it the whole way. 85 to the end. Gets over there, fills it up, and it's not there. He gets tackled by the guy he's reading. So do I love putting it in my playmaker's hand on fourth and four? Yes. Do I love speed option to the boundary? Probably not. Need more like fourth and two to do that. But again, you know, just call a normal quarterback run has been working great. Get him out on the edge. You know, he missed the, the throw on the pylon, but tough, tough right there. It's a great stop from Syracuse. So one more time, just read in seven, watch it out. This is to win the game. This is fourth and win the game. Tough. Just a bit of hero ball showing up. And not great design, not great play calling. And here's the last series. Again, that same concept we've been talking about where he's hit that hinge or stop to the field with a post to the middle of the field. I mean, give us a shot. So the one up top, just keep taking what's giving you what they're giving you if you can. That's the same play to the field up top that he's hit twice already with great anticipation. Now he holds on to it, maybe trying to get the post. Strip sack, pass pro lets him down. They don't get the ball back. That's how we lose. So is it the exact same pass protection? No. We take some L's? Yes. But could he come back here, take his three steps, hitch and throw the post? Yeah, he could. He really could. I don't understand it. So again, one more time with the pass pro. You know, they run a nice little game here, trying to pick that right guard. But he's got enough time to be able to take three, hitch, and throw the post. So again, this is, I mean, this is to literally lose the game. So it's worth diving into. We've already talked about this concept. Post will stop out here and then a little bit deeper, like hinge down here. We've already ripped this thing twice with great anticipation. We've already identified on the film, and I guarantee they did on the sideline, hey, we've got an opportunity to attack this middle of the field if we catch him in the zero look with this concept again. They dial it up again. This is a touchdown. The difference between a strip sack fumble because you're late and a touchdown is tough. So you be the judge for yourself as far as the time. I'll stop it at the top of the drop. Play fake, throw it. I mean, he's off of it, right? He's looking, he's already gone from right to left. Now maybe he's not looking at the post. He's only trying to rip that stop outside or that route up top, let it roll. You made that throw many times. The corner's not looking at you, throw it. But to me, the post is the miss, hitch, hitch, throw. That's a touchdown. So we go from a turnover strip sack to miss a possible touchdown again with this attack in the middle of the field. And again, I, I don't think it's necessarily his fault at the end. You know, it's always going to be the quarterback's fault on these kind of strip sacks, but I just wish he would let the ball rip and attack the middle of the field with a little bit of anticipation because we've missed multiple touchdowns here. Again, look at his eyes. He's already off of it before he even gives it a full hitch or reset. Tough, and that's just a tough way to miss an opportunity for a big win on the road. My goodness. So that is a wrap on Malik Willis Part 2B. 
Uh, I really enjoyed breaking this thing down. I'm sure we're going to get into a lot more Malik Willis here as we get into draft season. I'm excited to do it. Let me know who else you want to see broken down on the channel. As always, I appreciate the support. Thanks for spreading the word. I will see you next time. Have a good one.